In this video, we will be constructing RV Projects Trailer Test Set version 1.5. So what is a trailer test set and what is version 1.5? Simply, the trailer test set is a means to mimic the tow vehicle when connected to a 4 or 7 pin trailer. Essentially, it can perform any function of the tow vehicle and can assist in installing or troubleshooting trailer wiring. Version 1.5 is one of three different trailer test sets designed by RV Project. Version 1.5 can be used in a standalone configuration or with version 1.0 of the trailer test set. A video has been published showing the differences between the test sets and I will provide the link here. So let's go through the basic functionality of it. Since we don't have a RV connected, we need a source of power, so we're using the auxiliary power input. And you can see we show we're getting 12 volts. Reverse lights, that's the backup BU. And then a taillight marker there's the taillight marker and then we have the right turn then left turn and then finally hazard we have left and right blinky and then we have brake and you can see that when you brake the left turn and right turn lighter on which is what should happen and then if you go to say right turn you hit the brake, then you can see the left turn is on solid, showing the brake, right turn still blinking, which is what you would expect. Also, there is a project website for constructing the test set at rvproject.com, and a link will be provided here as well. On that webpage, you will find a construction document, download files for the front panel, and for the 3D printed parts and other information. The construction document includes a schematic, a bill of materials, and a step-by-step -step set of instructions and wiring diagrams. Also, an alternative to 3D printing is discussed if you do not have access to a 3D printer. As I construct this project, I am not going to do a step-by-step -step guide on how to build it. Rather, I'll just kind of show you the highlights for things that may not be quite as clear on the website. So here we have the front panel as it comes from Front Panel Express. And uh, they actually do a real nice job. Look at that. Isn't that nice? So the first order is I want to put in all the components on the top. I generally start with the handles here. Then when I flip it over upside down, the handles will protect the top from being marred. And this is the box that we're going to build it in. And what I like to do is to take the top and set it on the box and when I look through the handle holes, I can see that I need to make cutouts in the four corners. And I need to do that so that these rack handles will fit. And this is fairly thin gauge aluminum, so this nibbling tool works just fine. You can see that there's a cutting edge that when I depress the tool, cuts into the metal. So you use it by setting it into the material and then squeezing it and you can see it cut that little square piece and I'll there you can see how that works. And when we're done you can see where we've added a little uh, area of clearance here. So again when we put our panel cover on the four locations for the rack handles will allow it to fit flush with the top of the chassis. And the next step is I got to punch holes in the side for these. This is a one and a half inch knockout punch. And the way these work is you have to drill a hole, you put the punch in, you screw this to the outside, and then you take a wrench and turn it. This will pierce the metal and cut a perfect round hole. The one and a half inch conduit is actually larger than one and a half inches and it fits perfectly. And I used a step drill to drill in the side. 
enough so that I had the proper diameter for the lockout. They're not cheap. They're around $35. Well, it's just a matter now of tightening. And there we go. Perfect hole. In the first step, we installed the seven banana plugs. And you can see that the corresponding colors don't look like they match. For instance, we have white, blue, yellow, but with a red one, black red with a black one, brown, green, and violet. And you may think that don't make any sense. However, if you watched my all about seven pin wiring video, you know that the color code differs between whether it's an RV color code or an SAE color code. So the clue is up here, NFPA 1192, which is actually where the RV color code comes from, has the colors white, blue, red, black, green, brown, and yellow. The SAE J2863 color code has white, blue, yellow, black or red, brown, green, and violet. So essentially, this color code here matches the SAE color code. The colors of the sockets actually match the RV color code. And next we've installed the reverse and the tail marker switches. And they can only go one way because they're keyed on the panel. Next, we want to install the turn signal switch. And I recommend doing a 3D print of a wafer and if you don't have this wafer, you can probably make one out of a piece of plastic. But there's a notch here. And this wafer puts the switch at the correct distance. And I see the notch sticks up a little bit. So what we have to do is to file that off or, or take a pair of nippers and nip that off so it's flush with the wafer. When you install this switch wafer, I recommend using a little bit of electronic adhesive around here just to help hold it. And when you install it, the notch on the outside is up. And then for the brake switch, we have the push button switch itself, a switch guard, and then the switch cap. And the switch also comes with a nut that I like to use because that makes the cap fit more flush. And there is a notch in the bottom here, so the switch only goes one way. And then we put the guard on. When you look into the end of the cap, it should be flush. And then we just snap the cap on. And then we have these little clear bezels, I don't know if you can see that or not, that snap into the front panel here. And I just have one more to do. Like that. And then we will install the LEDs from the back side. To make the wiring task a little bit easier and to give the LEDs a bit of mechanical support, I came up with a small circuit board that basically has the current limiting resistors for the LEDs and several diodes. It's surface mount, but you should find it's fairly easy. And just follow the document on constructing the test set to know where to place these parts. And we have the test set here on the back side. And the way this works is that the circuit board simply fits on there and the LEDs go through the circuit board. And you may want to test the LEDs to make sure you got the right colors because at least if you have the ones like I have, the clear ones. And the easy way to do that is to get a button cell such as this CR2032 or 2025. And this is a positive side and this is a negative side. And this is easy for testing LEDs. The short side of the LED is negative, so simply place the LED across the button cell like that, and you can easily test it. You don't need a current limiting resistor that kind of self-limits this current. And basically, you just press it in until it snaps in place. And these can fall out, so just be aware of that. And then we'll simply populate the other slots the same way with the short lead to the right when you have the panel oriented like I do. Then again just double check everything all the short leads are to the right and then as we put the circuit board on we start at one end and just start feeding the LEDs in one at a time and what I want to do is make sure that this board is parallel to the front panel. 
Our next step is to mount three relays. These are single pole double throw and this is a electronic flasher and a barrier strip. We want to mount those in the bottom of the chassis. The easiest way that I found to mount these, I 3D printed a little bracket and I'm telling you if you don't have a 3D printer and you want to do projects you owe to yourself to buy one. And I do have the STL file for this on the website. If you don't have a 3D printer you could use double sided tape or what have you to stick these to the inside of the chassis. The way this works, I actually have a little interference fit. They won't slide it in and out by themselves. You got to kind of push them in and you can get them out if you have to. And there we go. And we're going to want to mount the relays in the top like that. I want to do it from the bottom side. For example, for here I can ensure that I don't punch this too close to the feet than having trouble trying to put screws in there. And to do that I will use my punch set and then I just have to find the right punch. And these punches are for different hole sizes and then they are self-centering. You just put that in the hole and then you hit it with a hammer. And I do make a mark. Next, I will locate and drill the holes for the terminal strip and the relay bracket from the bottom side of the chassis. And here we have the result. We have the relays and the turn signal switch with our 10 pin barrier strip and the screws in the bottom. You also notice I took off the protective covering because now I'm done with screwing holes into the outside. One issue that you will have when you're building this test set, you have a minimum bend that you can put in here. What that means is that sometimes it's too high. So here's a trick. You take the terminal and put a needle nose on one end and a needle nose on the other and just twist and then the sleeve will come off. Now of course you can buy these terminals that are called uninsulated and it already comes that way. However, you have to buy a box of 25 or 50 or whatever. So what if you only needed a couple? Well, you can just take the sleeve off. And then with the sleeve off, when you bend this, you can kind of bend it at a right angle. And so now you can see this gives you more clearance. Now, of course, there's no strain relief on here. And I would recommend, and what I usually do is put some heat shrink on here to help give it a little bit more of a strain relief. I'll bundle these pins together because usually I'm going to a terminal strip or I'm going to a relay or what have you. And then, of course, you just put a cable tie on here. Next, we will begin with the relay and flasher wiring. I cover this in detail in the construction document, so I will only show a few photos of the progress. Rather than trying to daisy chain the relays, I have found that running each lead individually to a common point works better. Also, make sure the relays and wiring is less than 2 inches high from the bottom or the front panel will not fit. And at this point, the relay pre-wiring is done. There should be one connection on the relay that is not connected to anything if you've done it right. And I show here how close the parts are to each other, so ensure you maintain that 2 inch height limit. And finally, the chassis is pre-wired ready for the relay module. Well, at this point, we're ready to begin the final assembly. And one thing I want to point out is that in here, you can see that some of the terminals on this strip are underneath this connector, so it's going to be impossible to get to them. So what you'll have to do is to unscrew the connector, back it off a little bit, and then you can get to the terminals. And also try to route these things as tightly as possible. Otherwise, you're going to get too much stuff in here, and it's not going to close properly. Well, we have the final assembly, and it kind of looks like a mess, maybe a little bit, but there is some organization to it. You don't have a lot of extra room in here, so keep these wires as short as possible when you put them in. And these are Nutric PowerCon connectors, and they're kind of neat. Install them like that, and then turn them, and it locks. Then to release it, you push back on it and turn it back, and it'll come out. 
The simplest test consists of connecting the trailer test set to a RV having a 7-pin connector and internal battery. Nothing else is required. If the RV does not have its own battery, you must use the external battery cable. The limit of the brake current is 20 amps. Given each brake consumes about 3 amps, this should be sufficient for a triple axle trailer with 6 brake mechanisms. With the addition of a 7 to 4 pin wiring adapter, the test set can also test 4 pin trailers. However, the battery cable must again be used to supply power. Typically, the 4 pin configuration consists of left turn, right turn, and taillights. The fourth wire, of course, is the ground wire and 5-pin trailer wiring configurations can be tested as well, provided you use the proper 7-5-pin to five pin adapter. A 5-pin configuration adds the backup circuit to the left, right, and taillight circuits. Again, battery cable must be used. And finally, 6-pin configurations can be tested, again with the correct 7-6-pin to six pin adapter. I should note that these adapters are common items and can be found in many trailer stores. The 6-pin configuration adds battery and brake circuits to the left, right, and tail light circuits. Therefore, the trailer may or may not supply power to the test set, so obviously the use of the battery cable is dependent on the trailer having power. In this demonstration, I have hooked up a set of tail lights, and we have the 4-pin connector, and then we have the adapter that is a 7-pin to 4-pin adapter, and then we will turn the power on, Again, we get the power indicator, and we'll turn on the tail light marker lights, and then we'll turn on the right turn. Left turn. Then hazard. And then brake. And again, if we have the right turn on, and then we depress brake, it turns the other light on just like you would expect. And then the same thing for the left turn. This thing fully checks out. There is no reverse, of course. Even though we don't have a brake control, the brake lights still work in the 4-pin configuration. Well, that's about it for this video. And as soon as the weather gets better, I'll go out and connect this to the RV along with test set version 1.0 and show you more of an in-depth explanation of how they work together. Visit rv-project.com.